And in between where the light is the brightest, which we call the highlight, it blanches out the, the local color. And then where it gets murkier before it turns into shadow, it's also diminishing. The, in between is your local color. In between the highlight and the darkest light is local color. <coughs> But you could put local color any place you want. You put it where it suits you best in the picture. I don't want it to be, oh, where is that band? But you, you, you have to use local color. You use color where it, it, it's usually in the right place. Reality is good about that. You put some things in the right place for painters to paint. Anyhow, so the idea of creating form is to get rid of those edges as places of focus, lightens shadow, but you can't have shadow getting darker than it is once you establish. But so this has to look as though the shadow, the light gets darker, the shadow doesn't get lighter. Uh, the, the transition belongs to the light. The shadow is in transition and the light is transitioning. Okay, so now on the light side, the light doesn't get darker to turn into shadow, uh, turn into the background, rather, because when light hits something, like my top of my fingers, it's lit immediately. Light doesn't say, well, I'm on an edge, I'm going to start darker. <laughs> Just to make it easy for those guys who want to paint me. On the inside <coughs> edge, you, you lose the tactile quality. I mean, if this were a, a vase or some you know, hard surface and you just soften the inside edge to, to soften, then you'd, you'd lose the tactile quality. So you want to have, you know, it still wanted to look like a, an egg, so you, you try to just, you know, so, it's the gazinta fact. You want this to gazinta, gazinta that. So anyhow, so you light the background very, you know, again, depending. Usually, like, if this, you know, in a, where the egg is really rounder and harder, you'd soften it a little bit less than where here there's more turn to the nose of the egg, so here you can have it much softer here to retain the heart. You don't have to soften the entire thing. So you, according to the tactile quality or the, the turn of whatever the object is, so some places you'd soften it less and then here, because it's kind of going, to me anyway, it's going this way as well as that way. So over here you could have, you know, even more, more light in the background. Uh, and then it, it's a tricky business. <laughs> I mean, it's tricky in the sense of, it's just how you see something and also the requirements of its place in the painting. To, I mean, and it could, another thing I could have done is make this darker so that what I had before light would look lighter so you could do it either way, but but anyway. So that's but just uh, that's how you get rid of the attention, you know, on on this side. You just have that little band where it gets a little bit, and also it has the effect, obviously, of whoops, of giving a feeling of the light being more luminous. It's that it creates a, a halo that's really like a little halation of light. So it really makes your light look more luminous. And then, ultimately, the function of the highlight is, of course, to, as your at ultimate attention getter, the function of the highlight, of course, is to create you know, more attention <coughs> inside. 
And, and this is a case where you actually what is it? you attach you attach the finish to the middle. So this, by making the highlight and the highlight would be on the corner where the cha the change of direction. And this, you know, trickles out or so the function of the highlight is to take your attention away from the edges. So again, the relationship, the relationship, how strong you can make this, you can make this very, very strong, the outside edge here, as if you had real hard surface, it's the edge versus the highlight. So the highlight, If it's this versus that. The stronger you want this to be, the stronger the highlight. The stronger the highlight has to be. See. Somebody did ask, I wonder who sent up the question, uh, in order to talk about beauty being in the eye of the beholder, you would have to first define beauty. Did anybody here send up that question? No, I, I was curious who, who did send it. Anyhow, that would have just taken you know, another couple of hours. But, but, but intelligence uh, is certainly part of beauty. But maybe we'll have part two next year if they do this again with maybe a different panel. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, I, I think people you know, did like it. But anyhow, so the idea is you're using, yes, Claudia, so not only, you know, it enhances the color, makes it look good, but it, the point is that you're using it, not copying it. You're using your intelligence to create using all the elements that are open to you to create the look of the painting, which as me is very different from having to squint to match something. It just, you know, it doesn't, it's, it's not intelligent. You're not in the picture anymore. The outside is that you're adapting yourself to your environment instead of adapting the environment to yourself. And human beings are happier when they adapt the environment to themselves, when you cause rather than effect. So having to match something outside, your effect, not cause it, the a soft sense. edge. The next edge has to be a soft edge, the next edge has to be. So edges always alternate because form is always doing this. So when a form ends, an ending and a beginning, of course, are synonymous. It's abrupt. An ending and a beginning, right? A beginning is abrupt, and an ending is abrupt, so I guess it's synonymous. So abrupt means a hard edge. Something has ended. A transition is a soft edge, because that's what a transition is. It's transitory. So, which is what, you know, why edges always have to be cool, the turn is always cool, because if it was a warm color, you would look at it, it wouldn't be a transition anymore if you notice it. So, by making it a murky color, we don't look at it, and that's why it appears, it goes out of focus, and it's a transition. So, form alternates you know, rises and falls, rises and falls. So edges must alternate. When a form ends, it ends, and when it goes through a transition, it's soft until that end. Now, human form, of course, what happens, a form can end in a shadow. That sequence, it's like an abstract sequence. I think of it as an abstract painting. It's just a bunch of abstract sequences, whatever you're, Painting is an abstract sequence of hard edges to soft edges, let's say. 
right? And just local color changes, or the length of the sequence changes. But if you, it's just a bunch of, it's a very abstract. Realistic painting is very abstract. Repre good representation of painting. So it's a sequence of, of events of light, transition, shadow. So, but since human form, some are very, very shallow, they don't all end in shadow or cast shadow. The cast shadow is also an end. We won't need the cast shadow actually. Hey, depending on that, you can see come and becomes this wedge here. So this leads you right around the eye, which is you know part, but but the important you know, for this, for what I'm, so this is a soft edge, this is a soft, would be a soft edge, also, and then the eyeball, of course, new form, so the eyeball is a hard, it starts as a hard edge, coming out from underneath it, you see, so, you understand, so the edge, soft on this side, and then the eyeball, and then that keeps going, you know, soft, and that ends. So, so you can see how edges alternate there. So this would be until that ends and cast shadow front plane of the nose. And this would be, a, you know, depending on, to make this look like it's in front of that, this would be a little more intense, let's say. And as it goes up, it becomes bonier, it becomes less, less intense. So just by ch changing the, co the color saturation from here, so there, you can get a feeling of it going back in space, and then the front of the brow ridge usually gets to be warmer and darker, so this comes back out again, which is part of the, part of the front plane, you see. It's great the way that works. Uh, yeah. And of course, the side planes we could keep cooler, you know, or make it make it subtler, corner, and and on the cheekbone itself, you get a corner. You see, so you're doing the same thing, but and yeah, getting back to to edges. Yes. So the insertion, as I sometimes can be very subtle. So this would go from this cast shadow to this little soft transition. And this would be cooler. You know, belonging to the bone of the eye socket. And this would be a sharp, a little sharper edge there, you see, because this is turning and ending. So when you get to this, you just hit that edge just a little bit sharper, but you're still paying attention to hard and soft edges. Is that, is that clear? Just like here, this is a little crisper because the form is ended. You know, this is harder. The form has, you know, is a new form, a new form starting. Now, what you're trying to describe with all these values and colors is the topography of the face, or the orange, or the A. So you're using values and colors, not, again, to try to copy what you're seeing. Andrea, hi. Hi. <laughs> you're using colors and value to describe topography. So you, that we're much better at than trying to match something. So if you, depending on how deep or shallow the form is that you're 
look at the person you're looking at. If you get the depths right, it will look like the person. You don't, if you get the depths off, the eyes don't, don't are not deep set enough, or they're you know, too, too, whatever, coming out. So you're using value and color to describe topography. So you're looking at the person that you're painting, the portrait you're painting, and you're trying to estimate, you know, how deep the cheekbone is. I mean, if, it, if the cheekbone is, you know, the person has very prominent cheekbones, then, you know, you, you can go a little bit darker, you know, to show, oh, this person, you know, whatever. Or if they're like a baby, a young person, where everything is very, very soft, then you want softer transitions. You understand? But that's, you're estimating that rather than just trying to match what you see. Your painting is telling you whether you get the depth, the depths correct or not. You see, you look at the person, but not looking at them for what the value is or the color is, but does it have that softness or crispness or that's equality, whatever it is you feel you're trying to describe, your painting is telling you whether you've gotten that. You know, and then you know, to keep going with the edge, edges, you know, that, let's say you have you know, a nice smile, smile line there. So again, this would be your, so obviously this is your soft edge because it's part of the form. And on the muscle side of it, that would be, you know, a hard edge because it's a whole new form. You see. So edges keep alternating. And this hard edge here, hard edge, this has to be, the nose turns over and it's a form. So this has to be a soft edge. Um, that belong, the soft edge belongs to the nose. Right? That makes sense. So this, you have to use background or soft. Just soft a little bit. And now, where the bone change is more abrupt, it's going to be a little harder edge up here. As the bone starts to flay out, it's going to be softer. And that's going to be, as I did with the egg, your leading tone to get to the next side. The upper, so you don't want this patch to be totally isolated, like it's floating in space. <laughs> so, so here and then it's going to be harder, and then this is going to want to lead you out to the other side, see, like that. So it, it opens it up instead of totally. Can you, can you see that in that? It just opens it up enough so you have a leading tone. And as I said, yes, I learned that from Rembrandt. So it just opens that edge just enough to on a surface. And if we get the code right, it looks like what we're looking at. If we get the code wrong, or decoding it, recoding it, then it, it doesn't, doesn't look like what we're looking at. So we are the problem. <laughs> you against you. <laughs> but, but that's really what a painter is doing. It's <clears throat> like <clears throat> foreign language. You're looking at something and then you're translating it into brush strokes of value, brush strokes of color, a soft edge. Hard. But edge is, is really the key. That's why I say in my <coughs> book, I put edges as the soul of the painting because mm -hmm. as I you know, they're trying to show you that you can change value with edges. You can do so much with edges that just studying edges will 
he did something and just tried to study the edges, learn the edges, you would learn how to paint. It's like the key to value, the key to color. A, a crisp edge is color. Just by itself, a crisp edge is color. You see, if you paint. That's why you have to make brush strokes. You have to make good brush strokes because right away you have color because of the crispness of the edge. So edges and paint quality, value color, edges really is an enormous, is the soul of the painting. It, it, just like the little bit of the nose that I'm showing open and closed. Um, it, and what's interesting too is where it's harder on the nose, it's softer on the cast shadow on the cheek. So the, where the, the bone is harder, it's softer. Where it's softer, it's harder. Like on the cartilage, the cartilage is part of the nose. That's where the cast shadow is the sharpest. Under, then the muzzle goes up and over and out, you know, after the cheekbones, let's go out. And then the top lip comes in, bottom lip wants to go out. Then this comes in, then that goes out again. You see. So you have this beautiful rhythm of up and over, down and under. As it just top of a piece of fruit, and the shadow down and under. Tabletop out. You see. So you have that just beautiful design of how the light works when it flows over everything. What else? That's it. I'm going to mix it on my palette or actually applying paint on the surface. Uh, and you know, it's why you hold a paintbrush a particular way and make a particular brush stroke is that um, the tip of the brush or the paint on the brush, okay, whether it's when I'm mixing it on the palette or putting it on the surface, I'm feeling. The paint is telling me, or, or my feeling, what's happening at the tip of the brush. That's where my consciousness, in a sense, is. So it's telling me what I can do with it, whether I can cover something, make it lighter, make it darker, how long a brush stroke I can make. So if that, as you asked Louis, that could be the meditation. It's like I'm like just. Feeling the paint all the time. That that's your technique. It's like hold, so holding a brush, making brush strokes where this is all open, your body is open, your arm is open, then you can feel the tip of the brush, you see. And then you so if you can manipulate manipulate, get that feeling of I can do I can cover black with white, I can cover white with black just by brush pressure, changing the pressure, then you can paint anything. You see, you, then you don't have any fear of, oh, I'm going to make a mistake, I'm going to mess up. It's just a matter of, of an adjustment. I'll adjust this to that. So that's really learning to paint, not just making, making an image. See. So you're learning when you're mixing paint on the pad. If you just scrunch the paint together, you see you're not learning anything because your nervous system is just, you know, where you to, 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 to. So you really always consider it. David. You're in the moment. You're always in the, it's a minute clip that they did a block of, and it's me explaining how to hold the brush, make a brush stroke. You can see it, but it's on YouTube, right? Yeah, it's YouTube. on YouTube, yeah. And then uh, comments, people have comments. But anyhow, some, uh, somebody, someone said, oh, LaFell, he's that brushstroke Nazi. And <laughs> 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 Seinfeld, and then the suit Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> I became the brushstroke <laughs> But But it's still, you know, uh, Whereas if you're doing, you know, if you're painting like this, you know, which is different as, as you yeah. heard, 
We've seen that. <laughs> it's that it's a whole different today. idea of painting, and it, you know, maybe uh, Jacob wouldn't have been as offended if I said it's rendering painting as opposed to brushstroke painting. But, but anyhow, it's, it's a different feeling than if you're using your whole arm and then you're making each brush draw, uh, you know, which, you know, beginning and ending, it's different approached as opposed to just trying to blend everything, you know, which to me, you know, it's a different kind of, you know, visually and physically, it, it, it's different. Everything is, is broken, you see, like yeah. angular as opposed to it. But that's my technique. That's the only, to me, that's just feeling the pain so you can feel confident whatever you do. If it's too dark, I'll make it lighter. If it's too blue, I'll dull it this way. So you're always painting. And, and of course, the other thing, which I, so if you're painting, you, know, you have a nice arms length. But if you want to do something finer, it's just a little trick. Instead of, you know, then all of a sudden changing your whole thing to this, you, you keep your arm in the same place and you just move your body closer. You see? So you still have that nice open feeling instead of doing that. So you, you still keep that nice open quality. You just get closer, but you keep it open. Sensual quality, or just the sensual quality of the paint, how it feels, and what you can do with it. And, and then it's the understanding, the, you know, what I've been talking about, just the intelligence, that it's just so intelligent. And when you see it visually all coming together, you know, the, technically, aesthetically, and everything just dovetails and it makes so much sense to me that it, it just, it's like a whole, it's just a totality of everything. You know, that, I mean, sometimes I have to say, uh, when, you know, when you're uh, really cooking or in this, it, it just feels like Best way I can describe it. It's like it doesn't feel like paint anymore. You know, it's like if you're making something light, it just feels like there's light actually coming off your brush or shadow is really shadowing. It's just you know, it's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. Everything comes together, the intelligence, the aesthetic, the technical, and, you know, it's just, uh, We're like, we a half hour over time. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just 12. <laughs> no, that's very good. Oh, okay. Thank you.